one particular thing? Uh, or so was it a... Uh, it was uh, actually an epiphany the next day of going, what can I do? Mm. You know, it wasn't this just sitting back and waiting for, for a big voice to come down from the sky. Right. <laughs> it was literally going, what can I do? And just the still small voice, as they call it, I'm going, oh, my goodness, I sing. Why don't I put a cabaret concert together, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to laugh at this. And invite 20 of my closest friends that can donate more than I can. And it's going to go straight to the ground. That was just my idea. Was literally going, I'll sing, invite 20 people, small cabaret. They'll donate money. It's going to go straight to the Philippines and bypass. And that was my initial idea. Okay. Within 24 hours, I send a no, you know, the power of social media. I send a notification to the Asian American community chapters that I belong with uh, on Facebook mm -hmm. saying I need performers and singers to come on board. Within 24 hours, I get messages like flooded saying we're in. We know we're not going to get paid, but we're going to sing or perform with you for wow. free. That was the wow. first 24 hours. The, the, the strange part about this that I, I kind of went, hmm is none of them were Asian Americans. <laughs> so so I, I questioned where I sent this to, double checked it, I was like, no, that, okay, whatever. I didn't think much about it. Then I said, okay, now I need to partner with a nonprofit just in case the people that donates, this 20 people that stuck in my head, right. needs a receipt for tax purposes. A nonprofit that I had worked with jumped on board, no questions when I said 100% of any donations is gonna go straight to the ground. No profit is being kept. Mm -hmm. And the nonprofit said, no problem. Okay. By day three from this amen, this is when things started clicking for me of going, I, I think I just unleashed something. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So powerful. I would, I would say so. <laughs> because by day three, I went, I, now I need a venue. And I get connected with a pastor that I have never spoken with by three people that never spoke to each other, giving me one name. So connected with him, told him what my plan was. He, he said, give me 24 hours. I'll try to see what venue I can, you know, find you. Now, keep in mind, this was towards the end of the year, Christmas time, holiday. Mm -hmm. Every venue wanted to charge a ridiculous amount of money, right? And I said to them, if I had that money, do you think it's going to go to you? <laughs> it goes straight to where the people <laughs> need it. Right. But, but um to fast forward, what had happened was then the pastor calls me, you know, day three from that amen and said, I have the perfect venue. They don't want any money from you. They're willing to donate the venue as long as you name them as a sponsor. And I went, huh, I have free singers and performers. I, I have a nonprofit that's on a hundred percent and I have a venue. And the only question I had was, will it hold 20 people? Because, again, I'm thinking such a small scale here. Small, yeah. Right? And, Which, and what, a lot of times that's what we do. We think, exactly. we think too small. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you know, well, that whole 20 people. And yeah. when the pastor responded, it's a concert auditorium being wow. given to you that holds 650 seats. Oh, wow. And then I went, what is happening right now? Mm. Because in rapid succession, three weeks into this of before I could even ask or plan things were coming my way. In fact, a week before the concert, this is, they went from cabaret to full on concert. I had a sponsor call me at 10 PM Eastern standard time and said, we hope it's not too late. We just heard about you. We heard about this, this event you're trying to put together. Is it too late for sponsorship? Now I wasn't even thinking of sponsorship. I was just thinking of love donations, right? right? And I said, no, it's not too late for anything. I said, who am I speaking with? And the lady said to me, I represent PepsiCo. Which is Are PepsiCo. you kidding? I am not oh, kidding. Oh, wow. And this is a week before the concert. In fact, I, when, when, before I could ask for anything, Stephen, this is, like I said, this is how God moves when that's, that mustard seed is activated. Mm. Because you want nothing selfishly to gain but everything to give at this point that before I could even ask for anything or think of anything, things were coming my way. When I said, okay, now I need a graphic artist. The next call is, Hey, do you have a poster? Cause I'm a graphic artist. What are we calling this thing? 
I'm like, one night, one voice. It just came to me, and I said, because it represents one night to make voices heard, but fueled by the fact that I started getting testimonials from halfway around the world of, of the true situations that were happening not covered by media. In other mm -hmm. words, here was mainstream media, and it's not to the media's fault, let me be clear, right? Mm -hmm. um, is that we're reporting, that the World Food Bank is sending this, we're sending millions of dollars, we, but we also know, just like a, an example in the earthquake in Haiti, that there's corruption, yeah, right? That's right? That is beyond people's control here. So I started getting testimonials of people starving, of that the ration was one can of sardines to two pounds of rice to feed a family of six to eight every four days. So every four days. Every four days. The desperation that mm. I felt now coming through messenger messages and people messaging me and calling me of help me find my mother, help me. I become this one person operation, right? Mm. And I, the more, the heavier I felt, the harder I prayed. Mm. I'm going, I was just going to yeah, I was just going mm -hmm. to ask how we were starting to feel with everything coming to seemingly everything coming together at once. It was overwhelming, but yet with a sense of, of, of basically fervor, unmatch, mm. because I knew that each time that passed by meant more suffering on the other side of the world. Mm. And I did not sleep for three weeks. I literally, when I said activate all the gifts you've given me, God didn't hold back in activating everything he has given me. <laughs> so I was on the phone, I was on calls, but again, divinely guided with, where everything was being provided at no cost. So this little, you know, we've, we now go to the event. This little event that I had planned for 20 people to attend now becomes a full-blown concert in three weeks with a lot of miracles in between with radio stations. There was a radio station that decided to sponsor one, two time airtime commercials. Right. Mm -hmm. And right. It, again, it, it became the, we don't know what happened. It just started looping around. Next thing you know, your commercial was airing two times a day for a whole seven days when we didn't program that. And other radio stations started picking it up. Wow. That is amazing. And so, what happens in this in this concert? Um, let me take a step back here. That feeling of betrayal I had from the country that I had left, right, now comes right. in full circle. Because in one of the connected, divinely guided connections, as I call it, uh, um, there's this man named Efren Pena Florida, who actually won CNN's Hero of the Year, which is one of the biggest uh, humanitarian awards mm -hmm. that's there on, on, on space, I connect with him and he is from the Philippines and I get a message from him that completely obliterates me while I'm in a restaurant as I get, read this message and I'm bawling like a baby <laughs> because the message read, Oh, hero of your country, rise up. Your people need you. Wow. Now I, that. I, <laughs> That, that <laughs> brought me home. I that unleashed all sorts of memories of having to disappear in the middle of the night. I, I call it almost like the modern day Anastasia, <laughs> the, <laughs> right. the musical, of being hailed by somebody who's, who was globally known in the space of humanitarianism to mm. just message me and says, oh, hero of your country, rise up. Your people need you. Wow. That, that would bring me to tears. Oh, sure I, that was the, there were many tears throughout this journey. <laughs> so the end result of One Night, One Voice, that number 20 that was stuck in my head, actually then represented impacting over 20,000 lives. Oh, because that's that, where that came from. That, okay. yes. So that movement ended up building sustainability gardens, feeding thousands of children across different regions, activating a mobile soup kitchen that I connected with there, rebuilding schools. I mean, this, this, this takes a life of its own. That to this day, when people hear about it, you know, they're, they're shaking their head. That led to different platforms of opening speaking spaces. Wow. Because it was a story that at that time was unmatched. Because at zero expenses, you literally take the parable of five loaves and two fish, connect That's it right. all 
called the mustard seed that moved in impossible mountains halfway around the world where I was sitting in my home here in the United States. And, and <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, so, so Melody, you know, in, in listening to all this, this is, this is just, I am literally, I'm blown away with <laughs> how that's, how that started. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what lessons did you learn from all of that that you just shared? What is, what are some takeaways so from that? that? So that the takeaways of the, again, the, the three keys that we're going to talk about here, but the first one is to truly activate that faith is to let go and let God, mm. you know, and would, mm -hmm. would you also say it's not about me? It's about others. Absolutely. Because, it, because as you're telling that story, I'm, I'm thinking, you and I talked earlier today mm -hmm. about, about uh, setting our focus not on ourselves mm -hmm. in our prayer, but on others. Right. And as, as I'm listening to you right now, I'm thinking you did just that with, with this mm -hmm. scenario. Right. And, and when you make it about others, whether it's in mm -hmm. relationships, business, connectivity, when you truly find and put the value on others and, and selfishly give, without expectations, right? The doors that it will open is unbelievable. So it is. And I would, I would agree with you that because that has been uh, something that was instilled into me by my, my mom, especially mm -hmm. is that it is about others that it is, uh, it, it is because mm -hmm. as I put that into practice, one, one of the other things was, as we know it as the golden rule to mm -hmm. treat others like you would want to be treated yourself mm -hmm. and to show grace and love and kindness uh, to mm -hmm. others. Because uh, when, when I focus on myself, I tend to be a little bit too selfish mm -hmm. and, uh, and the others needs don't seem as important, but I, I like what you said. And as you unfolded that story is uh, a, a real sense of the need to connect one thing and, uh, and to um, be concerned about the welfare of others, mm -hmm. which is uh, really important. But, and, and it goes beyond that because here I was yes, thinking small scale, right? Yeah. Small scale <laughs> thinking of 20 people will attend this cabaret concert and it turned out to be 650. The auditorium was almost filled to capacity, right? Mm -hmm. That ended up aiding over 20,000 people. And that was just the beginning. Now, it's critical for me to say, say and share this. Not everything was perfect after that. You know, okay. it opened so many doors, opened so many doors, speaking platforms, you know, uh, articles, because nobody could wrap their head around what just took place. No, I'm still having a hard time wrapping <laughs> and, around my head. <laughs> imagine me speaking in New York. Here's, here's, a, here's a funny for you. I'm speaking in New York as one of the typhoon or, or storm panelists, Next to me on stage, there were four of us. Next to me on stage was someone from the White House. And when she went on in front of audience, and they have every single social media representative over there mm -hmm. and a lot of in attendance, she talked about, you know, the typical things statistically. Here's mm -hmm. the millions of dollars. Here's things. Right. And there was a lot of angry people. I remember that. And then here I am of going, well, I'm going to talk about this, this event called One Night, One Voice. It started with a prayer. And then I had this very simple slide presentation. And then I said, in the very end, I said, this is where it led to. And it showed videos of the children and the villages and the sustainability go and everything. And it was a stunned silence that met me in the auditorium. And then it became literally a thunderous, you know, um, standing ovation. Mm -hmm. And as I sat down, the lady from the White House goes, how's that possible? How can one person have done all of that? And tongue in cheek, I basically said, you know, we have this thing called in God we trust. If the White House actually fully activated that, imagine what you can do. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> because, because if I was able to get that done and that wasn't me, imagine what would happen when a whole That's country right. activates this. So, but that again, I love that. <laughs> go, going back to, was it all peaches and cream? I'm since sure then was. absolutely not because here and i'm going to talk from a christianity spiritual or you can look at it from you know from whatever your belief system is mm -hmm. 
when you are in the right line of purpose, and I'll, I'll